Hey, what's up? It's Triggy. Today, I'm going to show you three levels of engineering using just office supplies. For level one, I'm going to engineer a rubber band shooter. This isn't your grandma's rubber band shooter, though. This is going to be a semi-automatic rubber band shooter. For this design, I'll use pencils and a pencil sharpener, cardboard, a ruler, markers, rubber bands, a holiday mug, a glue stick, scissors, and tape. We'll need a tool to help us precision cut the cardboard, so let's affix the blade of the sharpener onto the end of a new pencil to create a utility knife. It kind of sucks, but a crappy utility knife is way better than no utility knife, so no complaints here. We'll use that right away to cut some cardboard. It may seem arbitrary to only use office supplies, but this isn't so far from reality. While engineers aren't limited to office supplies per se, they're almost always constrained in the materials they can use, meaning they have to find creative solutions using the tools available to them. I've cut out several pieces to form a gear shape. The teeth of this gear need to be made out of sections of pencil, so I need to find a way to cut the pencils cleanly. I found that by cutting out wedges like a woodcutter's axe, and then smoothing the cut face, I was able to achieve a pretty clean cut. I'll do this eight times, and cut a flat face onto each section and glue them into place. We'll need this piece to be able to spin later. To do this, I'll add a piece of marker tube to act as a bearing. And to finish this piece off, I'll glue and cover the edges. To form the body of the shooter, I'll cut out the general shape and add some padding, leaving room for the gear and firing mechanism later on. I'll mark out a slot which we can cut out, and add a marker to act like a barrel, as well as a slot that'll come up later for the firing mechanism. To add structure and clean up the aesthetics, I'll add a strip of cardboard around the edge of the body to unify the housing. I'm gonna move on to the firing mechanism. Now it would probably be easiest just to make this out of some more cardboard, but I don't wanna use just cardboard, I wanna use a variety of office supplies. Instead, I'll use the lid of this marker, as well as some sections of plastic I'll cut out from a ruler. I'll attach those together with a pencil eraser using a crap ton of glue stick glue. The trigger will pivot on a paper clip, I just jammed a hole through the trigger, and the gear will rotate on a small piece of pencil. When the trigger is pushed, the gear is released and is free to rotate until the next tooth is caught by the marker cap. When a rubber band is loaded into place, the gear rotates until the rubber band bam, fires. I'll close the housing, and we are ready to test this thing out. I'll load the shooter, one rubber band at a time, rotating the gear back until it clicks each time. Here we go. This is awesome. And on my third or fourth try, I hit all of these targets. Nice. Pew, 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 pew. I think I pretty much nailed that one. The shooter works just like I hoped and expected. All things considered though, it's still a pretty basic device. So let's see if we can't step things up for level two. For level two, I'm gonna engineer a radio using just office supplies. For this, I'll need aluminum foil, a paper towel roll, a pencil and pencil sharpener, plastic folders, paper clips, cardboard, tape, scissors, and some cables. In order to make a radio, we're going to need a diode. And in order to make a diode, we're going to need fire. So that's what I'll work on first. To make this part, I'll additionally need paper clips, hand sanitizer, a battery, an eraser, and toilet paper. A diode is an electrical component that only lets electricity flow in one direction. The chemistry is a bit complicated for you punks and me punks, but all we need to know is that we can make a diode by combining graphite and oxidized steel, and that's why we need fire to heat the steel. I can generate heat by running a ton of current through this filament by short-circuiting a battery. This is actually how incandescent light bulbs work. They create light by glowing white hot. They're heat bulbs that happen to give off light, which explains why they're horrifically inefficient. I'll add a little switch on the side so we can turn this makeshift lighter on and off. Now, my office has at least a million hand sanitizer stations. I'm going to put some into a small glass, you'll see why in a second. And like Thomas Edison, or Joseph Swan, or whoever actually invented the light bulb, the first few choices of filament are unsuccessful. Until I try a longer section, which increases the resistance relative to paper clips. This does the job and creates enough heat to glow red hot and light some toilet paper on fire, which will also get you fired. I need a clean, steady fire. That's where the hand sanitizer comes in. The ethanol burns in a controlled manner and doesn't produce smoke. Now we can grab a piece of steel from the pencil sharpener and hang it over the fire. After a while, I blow out the fire and the blade has been oxidized. You can see it's taken on a bluish color. I'll set that aside and grab some more wires from the cable. The second electrical component we need is called an inductor, which is just a coil of wire. I'll wrap some wire around a piece of paper towel roll to make the inductor. More loops means more inductance. The last component we need is a capacitor, which is essentially two sheets of metal held very close to each other. Turns out these components aren't too complicated. 
we can use aluminum foil sheets and separate them with more paper towel tubes. With these three components, we can set up our circuit. For those interested, the inductor and capacitor are connected in parallel, the steel and graphite diode is connected in series, which connects to an auxiliary cable output. Physics alert! In order to adjust which station we're listening to, we can use the pen with a wire connected to ground to virtually change the number of turns in the inductor, which changes its inductance value. Similarly, we can change the capacitance of the capacitor by moving this tube in and out. By changing capacitance and inductance, we can select for a specific frequency using this formula. Phew! Glad that's over. This circuit is U-G-L-Y ugly. I'll pick out a nice color from these folders and glue it onto some pieces of cardboard. I'll use those to make a box that fits over the circuit with a little window so we can see where the pen is on our inductor. There's also a hole in the side so we can adjust the capacitor as well. I attached the ground cable to ground and created an antenna with a super long wire that I've hung out of my window. Now when I plug in my headphones, I hear... Nothing. This radio has no batteries or anything, and is powered exclusively from the tiny amount of energy carried by the radio wave itself. However, with a big enough amplifier, the signal should be audible. It's, well, mostly white noise. But, after a lot of searching and adjusting, I get some coherent signals, and even found some tunes. Not bad for a box of scraps. What do you get for the man who has everything? That's right, for level 3, I'm going to engineer a rocket using just office supplies. 3, 2, 1. We'll need a few more materials for this one. Altogether, I'm going to use cardboard, a ruler, folders, cables, some cleaning supplies, I found dish soap and baking soda, batteries, a marker, a glue stick, tape and scissors, paper, and two bottles. The first thing I'm going to do is soak some paper in water and make some paper pulp, which is known in the business as PP. I'll massage some glue stick glue into the mix, making the PP sticky. Okay, this pulp mixture is going to form the nose of the rocket. I'll use part of this bottle as a mold and press the mixture into a uniform thickness. While that sets, we can think about how to propel the rocket. We need fuel, which means we are going to need explosives. Don't try this at home. I'm bending the metal ruler and placing the pieces into the empty soap container. We can use some of the pulp mixture to hold them in place and make an airtight seal. I'm going to use a process called electrolysis to turn H2O into highly combustible gas HHO. In order to do so, I'm going to run current through the water. This will work best if there's an electrolyte in the water. Ideally, this would be potassium nitrate or sodium hydroxide, which can be found in some household products, but I didn't find these around the office, so I'll use sodium bicarbonate, aka baking soda. Do not, under any circumstances, use table salt with electrolysis. You'll create chlorine gas and be tried for war crimes. If I now run a current through the water, whoa, it decomposes into hydrogen and oxygen gas. Let's build a rig to capture the gas. I want to fill a bottle with this gas. In order to know when it's full, I'll start with a bottle full of water. Then, when all the water is displaced by the gas, we'll know it's full of gas. These batteries are getting hot, and this process is a little too slow. I'm going to switch the batteries out for a laptop charger, which delivers a steady 20 volts. Did I short out my charger and break it while filming this? Yes. Did I immediately grab another charger and not change any part of the procedure? Also yes. There we go! The last milliliters of water have been displaced, and we have a bottle full of HHO. We'll need a way to ignite the gas, and we'll use a similar trick from the filament in the radio project. First, I make a stand using the casing of the glue stick, this is a different bottle, don't worry, and adding tape until it makes a snug fit. I'll then thread the ignition wires through two holes in the top, and that should allow us to ignite the fuel with a battery. Before we do that, we need to turn this bottle into more of a rocket. I'll add fins to keep it flying straight, and some sections of folder, mainly to give it some color. I'll leave part of it uncovered so we can see inside the bottle at launch. You'll notice the nose cone is also made from folder material. The paper pulp wasn't quite dry when I removed it, and... yeah.
All right, so we are out in the field, which is out in a field, and we are ready to test out our rocket. Here I'm attaching some longer wires to the ignition system so I don't have to be right next to the rocket to launch it. This felt further away when I measured the wire in the apartment. Time to set the rocket onto the launch pad. HHO is lighter than air, so I don't have to worry about it escaping from the bottle so long as I keep the nose pointed up. Don't try this at home. Alright, the rocket is set up on the launch pad. For some reason though, the ignition system isn't firing. Jesus Christ, can you imagine? Nothing happened. Here's the rest of that clip. Okay, for real this time. The rocket is ready to fly. I've never seen how HHO explodes, and I bet neither have you. Get ready. Here we go. In three, two, one. <laughs> Did you see that rocket fly literally thousands, literally dozens of feet into the air? For real though, we made rocket fuel from office supplies. I could optimize the design in all sorts of ways, but I'm totally stoked that this worked as well as it did. While we're here, let's compare this to butane. Just spill some coffee in the office, see if there's any carpet cleaner. This one uses butane as a propellant. Well, that was definitely more fiery, but we didn't get any lift whatsoever, so I think we're going to stick with the HHO. Alright, that was three levels of engineering using just office supplies for tools and materials. We made some pretty sweet devices in this one. If you enjoyed watching, don't forget to like and subscribe. It's free, and it lets me know what you like to see. That's all for today's video. See you at the next one.